<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in a wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Fellas and girls, long hours at school or playing basketball, baseball, or other games calls for a hearty breakfast. Tomorrow, make yours a breakfast of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added health benefits of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, these ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're delicious. Yes, try them. You'll say... Here are breakfasts we like to eat. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Jack Madison and his father had gone to the Klondike with high hopes. But bad luck and hardship had dogged their activities. Their cash was nearly gone. Jack's father had become an invalid... And Jack himself had finally been forced to abandon work on his mine, the Klondike Queen. He didn't know that two men worked there secretly. Carslake and Peavy went into the mine night after night to work by lantern light. They were deepening a side tunnel. Hold the light a little closer to the wall. Hey, Carslake. Garslake, that rock looks different from the rest. Uh, hold that light steady. There's color in there. See? <laughs> yeah, I see it. Well, what's it mean? Peavy, it means we've got gold. Garslake, you're sure of it? You're dead sure? Do you know anyone that savvies mineral better than I do? No, but I want... I knew all along that Jack Madison's vein hadn't run out. I knew he would strike the mother load if he'd kept going through the fault. But he didn't. And now we've found it. Garslake, is it a rich vein? You sure we got the mother load? Just a minute. Hold that landing closer, Peavy. Yeah, sure thing. Anything you say. Yeah. That all right? Fine. Mighty fine. Richer than it was before Madison lost it. It's the richest vein I've seen. Then we're rich, Carslake. We're rich. Just a minute, Peavy. Maybe you forget that this isn't our tunnel. It still belongs to Jack Madison. Oh, yeah, that's so. But we'll buy it from him, that's what we'll do. We'll buy it. He won't sell. Sure he will. He thinks this mine has petered out. He quit it, left it. He'll suspect something if we try to buy it. Chances are he'll come here and look around. He'll see where we've been working. Yeah, maybe so. Better cover the work we've done so he won't notice it. He won't do business with us anyway, Peavy. Not after the way we cleaned him on that other deal. Oh, that. Yeah, that. Yeah, he was pretty sore about that deal. Sure he was. Who wouldn't be sore? How would you feel if someone took all your savings on a gold mine that had been salted? Well, maybe I could make him think my conscience bothers me after that last deal. Your conscience? <laughs> well, it's worth a try. I happen to know he needs cash and needs it bad. His father's a very sick man. Jack wants to take him away from here. Well, go ahead and try. Well, if Madison won't sell, I've got another plan. Maybe you better try that one first. Oh, I don't want to, Carsley. Why not? I've got nothing against Jack Madison. He's all right. I'd hate to see him put to death by savages. Savages? Indians. That's what my other plan will mean. I'll call him first thing in the morning and see if he'll sell out. If he won't, well, one way or the other, Carslake, we're going to have this gold. The following morning, Peavy and Carslake went to the small cabin where Jack Madison lived with his father. Ah, 
Hello, Madison. Evie. Mind if I step in for a minute? You're not welcome in this house. You said that goes double for me. Ah, just a minute. Please listen to me. Talk fast and get going. It's about that deal we had, that property you bought from me in Carslake. What about it? Well, Jack, I didn't know your Klondike Queen mine had petered out. I didn't know you'd given it up. (laughs) Oh, you did? No, I thought you were getting rich. When Carslake suggested that we unload some worthless land on you, I figured you could afford a loss. What about it, Peavy? I didn't know we were taking every cent you had. Well, you know it now. Yes, and I'm downright sorry. I want to do something about it. And take back the land you sold us and return our cash. Well, I can't do that, Jack. I'd like to, but... But what? Well, you see, Carsleg has most of the cash. And he's not like me. He doesn't have a conscience. <laughs> I've got to get the cash from him. And he'd never buy back the land we sold you. No, no, I reckon not. He knows it's not worth a cent. That's just it, Mr. Madison. But, Jack, here's something he doesn't know. He doesn't know how the Klondike Queen has petered out. He thinks the mine is worth something. Now, if you'd sell it cheap, I could get back all you lost. I thought you and Cars Lake were pals. We are. You're ready to double-cross him on our account? Jack, it's my cousin. Listen, you scheming polecat, it's no go. Oh, Jack. I did business with you once. That was enough. You need cash, don't you? Mammals! During the next few days, Jack saw nothing of the schemers. He dismissed them from his mind and devoted all his time and energy to panning the nearby stream for a meager existence. He didn't know that his enemies had left the community to lay plans for his death. On his regular route, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, came into the small community of Oxbow and stopped as usual at the home of his friend, Constable Dan Emery. I've got something to show you, Sergeant. Oh, what is it? This here? Tobacco pouch? Yep. But it's the heaviest tobacco you ever hefted. By the way, are you heading north from here? Yes, why? In that case, you were elected to deliver this pouch. Here, lift it. Heavy. Gold? Yep. Nuggets. What's the story behind it, Dan? Well, it was left here by a stranger. He stopped here and asked for a meal. I fed him and we got to talking. He asked me if I ever traveled. I'd like to know about it. Camped a short distance from Red Nose Pass, P.B. was confident that his plans would work out satisfactorily. But Carslake was slightly dubious. I tell you, Carslake, we've got nothing to worry about. I wish I could be sure that Oxbow Constable would find an honest man to take that gold up to young Madison. Oh, he'll see that Madison gets it. Don't worry about that. If Dan Emery can't find someone to deliver the gold, he'll bring it up here to Red Nose himself. A story in just a moment. For a breakfast that's delicious, for a breakfast that's nutritious, remember these three famous words. Shot from gun. Yes, shot from gun stands for the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These are the giant size, the king size grains of premium wheat or rice, shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Think of it. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puff rice are actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them crisp and tender as nuts in November. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's inexpensive, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full, add some fruit, and milk or cream. Talk about good. What's more, long hours at school and play call for a hearty breakfast. And Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and the constable, accompanied by King, headed east to visit the Valley of the Spirits, before delivering the pouch of gold to young Jack Madison. A mournful wind sighed through the valley. The ground was wet and soggy from melting snows. I, um, I reckon you must have heard that my boy was brought home. Yes, we did. And we're mighty sorry, Madison. Mighty sorry. Have a cheer. 
Madison, I... Well, hardly know where to begin. I know you hate me for that swindling deal. No, I... I don't hate anyone anymore, P.V. Glad to hear that. Um, that, uh... Yes, yes. That's my boy over there under the blanket. You want us to go to the North Ridge for the coroner? Yes, <clears throat> Sergeant Preston will let the coroner know. Oh. I wondered where the mount he'd gone. Madison, P.V. and I swindled him. Well... Money don't mean much. Nevertheless, you've got to have cash to live. I don't suppose Jack located a gold mine where he went. No. Look here, Madison. Maybe this is a poor time to talk business. But we've got to work fast. There's a newcomer in town. I can unload that Klondike Queen on him. What good's the Klondike Queen? The newcomer don't know that it's worked out. Cars Lake and I want to return the cash we swindled you out of. Why don't you buy back that no account land you sold me and my boy? There's no tunnel on that land, but the Klondike Queen really looks like something. You want to buy it? Yes. You see, we can resell it right away. But it's... It's not mine to sell. It's Jack's. Well, you're Jack's only relative, aren't you? Yes. Then the Klondike Queen is yours. That is, unless your son left a will giving the property to someone else. Oh, Jack never had a will. Madison, I have $1,500. That's more than we took away from you. It's, it's hard for me to think of business, Cars Lake. And... Mm, I realize that. But the fact is, we've got to get the tunnel right away to take advantage of the chance to sell it to the newcomer we mentioned. If we wait, we may miss the chance. Well, I reckon I may as well take your offer. That's good judgment, Madison. We'll, we'll have to have a witness, won't we? Well, I'll go and get some men from the cafe. And while you're going, PV, I'll get the papers all ready. Good. I'll be back in a little while. Come on with me, Carly. See you later, Madison. Yes, yes. I'll be here. <laughs> Big Jim Madison watched through a tiny window until PV and Carsley were out of sight, and then... You can come out now. Sergeant Preston came from a small woodshed at the rear of the building. I heard them, Madison. <laughs> It's easy enough to see through their plans. Yes, those ornery buzzards. They didn't wait long to pounce on Jack's property. You said I should hear what they had to say and be agreeable. It is just right. You can come out from under that blanket now, Jack. Good. It's a lazy job being a corpse, but I don't like it. <laughs> You'll have to resume the role of corpse when TV and Coslake return with witnesses, Jack. Meantime, we'll get a bill of sale ready. Those poor cats. They knew they couldn't buy it from me, so they planned to have me killed, figuring they'd deal with Dad. I wonder why they want that worked out, man. Uh, that's what I want to know, Dad. And that's what we're going to find out. It was about an hour later when Big Jim saw P.V. and Carslake returning with men who would act as witnesses to the exchange of property. Jack resumed his position beneath the robe on the bunk, and Sergeant Preston returned to the woodshed. When four men entered the cabin... Big Jim was apparently alone with the body of his son. He showed the bill of sale he had prepared. When the signatures of the witnesses had been fixed to the bill of sale, Peavy and Carslake left Big Jim and went with the witnesses to celebrate what they considered a smart deal. The following morning found the plotters at the Klondike Queen. They went to work removing the worthless dirt they'd used to conceal their precious discovery. They shoveled furiously without pausing to rest. Sweat rolled down their faces. In the light of several lanterns, their eyes burned with eagerness to reach the mother load. Finally, Carslake threw down his spade. We've got it, Peavy. There's the load. Gold. Gold, Carslake, and it's ours. All ours. A fortune if it's worth a cent. <laughs> well, Madison will be fit to be tied when he hears of this. Yeah, we'll just tell him that the deal I counted on fell through. So we decided to come back and look the tunnel over and found this load. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll give him a little more cash just to show him how generous we are. Did you say generous? Uh, what the... Sergeant Preston! What are you doing here? I wondered why you were so eager to buy the Klondike Queen. You knew there was gold here. You couldn't deal with Jack, but you were sure you could deal with his father. Very smart, aren't you, Molly? You planned to murder Jack Madison. Try and prove that. You sent him to the Indian's burial ground. We didn't send him there. He went on his own hook. You knew he'd go there. Come in here, Constable. Constable? Yes, I'm right here. You here. This the man who left the pouch of gold with you? He's the one, all right. You, mm -hmm. you went with Jack Madison to hunt gold in the valley. That's right. All right, Sergeant Preston. Suppose you're right. What are you going to do about it? 
We've bought and paid for this tunnel. We've got a bill of sale here to show it. Perhaps that bill of sale won't mean much when the truth is learned. Who's going to tell the truth? I am. Guess again. Peavy, put that gun down. down. your life. Take the money's weapons cards, Lake, and then the constables. We're taking no chances on losing this deal. Don't try it, cars, Lake. Go on, do as I tell you. We're going to herd these two in one of the old tunnels and leave them there. We'll seal them in with blasting powder. You can't get away with murder. You'll see what I can get away with. King was watching the scene from 20 yards away in the tunnel. The mighty dog was tense and trembling with eagerness to attack the man who held a gun on his beloved master, the man who laughed so tauntingly. But King was restrained by Jack's firm grip on his harness. Just what will you do, huh? Phoebe, I hoped you'd threaten me with the constable as a witness. Now we have a charge that'll put you two in jail. Hey, King! King was waiting for that. He raced past the constable and Sergeant Preston, leaping beneath the gun and striking the fodder with overwhelming force. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, let me up. Oh, that dog. Get me. All right, King. I have him covered. I had a hard time holding him. Jack Madison, you. You bet it's me. King and I were back watching. Get up, Phoebe. Get out of my tunnel. It's our tunnel. We bought you it. You bought it from my dad. It wasn't his to sell. I'm alive, so that deal is void. Now get out. You can't get away with this, Jack. You can't get away with it, I tell you. We'll fight this through the courts. You'll have a fight in court, all right, PB. But you'll be fighting for your freedom. And you can't win. You can't win because Constable Emery and Jack Madison both witnessed the way you pulled a gun on me. And if you ask me, PB, we can make that charge stick. Ah, that dog. If that dog hadn't come here, we'd have gotten all three of you. If King hadn't been on hand, PB, we'd have used a different method. You couldn't win. <laughs> yes, King? The case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. The packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the one and only delicious Quaker Puff Wheat And Quaker Puffed Rice. Fellas and girls, you too can help through your Red Cross. So give a dime, a quarter, or more if possible. Yes, get whatever you can to the 1949 Red Cross Fund. This year, thousands of boys and girls like yourselves will need help. I can't begin to tell you all the things the Red Cross does, like helping people in fire and flood areas and in dozens of other fine services. So give through the Red Cross, the heart of America. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the Caribou case. When a big dog tried to pick a fight, King turned tail and ran. When I finally learned the reason for what seemed to be a cowardly act, I realized that King's instincts were more reliable in the judgment of any man. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. 
This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>